This is the HP Pavilion laptop and the battery does not work anymore so we have a replacement and as you can see there is no easily removable battery uh, that the battery is actually on the inside of the laptop uh, so you have to disassemble it partially in order to replace the battery. So the first step is to use a little screwdriver to peel back the rubber uh, tabs and these that will reveal screws. Take out the rubber piece entirely. In fact, just loosening the screw will be enough and then lay the rubber back down so that the screw doesn't fall out whenever you're turning the laptop around. Next, remove the screws that are visible. A magnetic tray uh, is very handy for keeping the different sizes of screws kind of sorted. So I use the very thin piece of metal with a spatula to um, kind of pry in this direction and get into the crease and then turn this way and it will pop out. Um, and then I can kind of follow in that direction and continue to, to pull the pieces apart. The corners are pretty tricky. A little utility knife is, I found, works very well too. Uh, I can push in in this direction and then rotate. And you can see it, it's prying them apart. I probably have to go a little farther to get to the next snap point though. If you can land the tool right in the area where the snap point is, it'll work a lot better if, if you're far away, say if you're in between two of the snap points and you're trying to go in the middle, you're going to have to uh, pry really hard as compared to if you go right at where the two pieces are joined. So, and that's guesswork until you've pulled it apart for the first time. So it looks like, it looks like there's one right here. And I was right. So I could see based on the way the plastic was flexing where the snap point actually was. All right, that corner came apart okay. So at this point I have enough that I might be able to do it by hand carefully. Now I'm on the side with the ethernet port or opposite of the optical drive because I think that there's some more, there's one more snap point on this side. So I noticed that this screw, even though it felt loose, was still holding on a little bit. So I put pressure and then I turn the screw until it pops free. So I'll just do that to this side too. Except no, this one's already good. Okay, so now I'm going to try to work on the bottom. All right, so at this point, the optical drive will actually come out entirely, and you can see that is the SATA connector. There are a couple snaps along the back, and so there's one right in the middle. So I kept thinking there was something in this area that was holding it down. I realized there's actually a second screw. I didn't peel the tab far enough back. So once this guy's out, my golly, look at that. All right. And sure enough, there's a second screw on the other side too. All right, let's see what happens. Remove this battery. Um, there's a couple screws holding it in, and oh, there we go. 
These screws feel like they have Loctite on them. Yep, there's a little bit of blue. So they've got Loctite. Just be careful not to strip them. Um, you're used to screws being tight right at the beginning, and then once it's loose, it's real easy. Loctite makes it so you have to... Um, it, it makes there be a lot more resistance while turning the screwdriver the entire way. Um, and that can feel weird, but don't... Um, just make sure that the screw is actually turning so you're not stripping because these screws are so small. All right, so there's four screws total. So the connectors here, uh, we can't lift up from this end as far as I can tell. So we're gonna just lift a, enough on the front or back of the battery, I guess, and pull that off. Okay, so now the new one can go in. I'm just gonna compare them. It looks like all the holes are the same. Just make sure that these all uh, Posts are sticking up through the tabs and that they're seated all the way. And with that, we'll put the screws back in. So while the top's open, let's look at some of the other components that you might be interested in replacing or upgrading. This is the hard drive. That's where all your files are stored. If you wanted to upgrade to a solid state hard drive, you could buy, um, they're pretty much standard. Just get a two and a half inch um, SSD. And this is the two and a half inch dimension. I mean, they're pretty much all like that. And then it has this uh, SATA port, which this isn't a SATA cable but it goes into what this appears to be an adapter that then plugs into the hard drive. So the hard drive you buy won't have this adapter. You'll just, um, th but this adapter should like mate with the hard drive you buy anyway. And here's the RAM card. Um, I don't see it written on here how much RAM it has, but note that there's a second RAM card which means that we could, uh, if we had a spare, we could add more RAM to this computer. While we're at it, I'm gonna add an additional eight gigabytes of RAM, which could be a nice thing. Uh, this is the Wi-Fi card, and it, sometimes those also have Bluetooth. I don't know if this computer has Bluetooth. Uh, the fan, of course, is important to check the airways to make sure that nothing is blocked. So instead of having the fan directly on the CPU, they have this uh, piece of metal here which will kind of wick the heat away from the CPU and the heat will be removed at this point where the fan is. So the heat will transfer down and conduct through this metal piece and then the fan will cool the metal from here. So with the back gently set, I'm going to flip it over and check that the computer will power on. Now, of course, the battery hasn't been charged or I just pulled it out of the package, so, but it may have some, oh, that's gonna be tricky to press that button probably. I think I can get it though. Now, because we just replaced the battery, the computer said that its CMOS chip um, had had an invalid checksum, I think is how it phrased it. But basically, uh, I, think, I think the CMOS is what holds the computer time, and it's designed that it will always have power, so it never, um, so, so as long as it has power, it holds the time. But since we just took the main, well, usually there's a separate battery on the circuit board that holds the, the time. 
but maybe because the computer is designed with the battery that's not easily replaceable, that they use that to, to supply the CMOS um, clock. But the computer uh, knew how to fix the issue. It just rebooted itself and just corrected things. All right, well, everything booted up nice, so I shut it down, and now I can put the optical drive back in and snap the back back on and put the screws in. Now I'm ready for the back. All right, so just kind of go around and hit all the tabs. Now, this laptop actually had two sizes of screws. These little short ones go in the front, and there's only two of them. Longer ones are what are used in the rest of the laptop. And on the front, uh, when I just was putting the screws in, um, it was sort of attaching itself, but then I realized uh, the this metal lip is supposed to come up over, so you may have to go along and press on the plastic and get it to fall behind the metal lip. One screw left, but before I put that in, I actually have to put the optical drive back in and I waited until last because uh, the back has to already be on. I couldn't put this on, you know, before I put the back because the back actually has this part that comes down below the drive and above the drive. So the back's already, that has to be on. Um, so I'm just gonna right, I have to kind of gingerly do this. All right. So I can feel it right there pressing into the saddle port. And now I'll put the screw in. I can check my work by pulling on the optical drive and seeing that I it doesn't slide out anymore. All right, this will be the final reboot. I think that that is, means we did a successful replacement of the battery. All right, well, that's how you pull one of these HP pavilions apart and replace the battery or the RAM or whatever else you want. Thanks for watching.